Welcome back to Intro to Physical Anthropology. I am David Leitner. I am your instructor. Today, we are going to talk a little bit about blending inheritance. This is going to be a relatively brief video. It's not a big part of the chapter, but I think it's a really interesting historical footnote that um, is worth understanding and it has some relevance to the way people think about genetics today. Um, a little background. So at the time that um, Darwin published on The Origin of Species, uh, there were two competing schools of thought in terms of how traits were passed on from generation to generation. Uh, nobody knew about DNA, nobody knew about genes, nobody knew about chromosomes. So the, the real dispute was, is it passed on like a in a particulate way like uh like you would sort of like hand off a gift to somebody or is it more like a blended sort of way the way that you might sort of pour paint into a can and mix it up to get a new one um that was sort of the big debate um for darwin this was relevant because if the blending inheritance um theory was correct, the natural se selection couldn't work. I'll show you why in a minute. But essentially, any useful trait would be lost within a few generations because it, it would get so diluted. On the other hand, if particulate inheritance were correct, it would actually bolster uh, and uh, uh, really give a big boost to the theory of natural selection because theory of natural selection it requires those traits to be passed on in such a way that they can continue generation after generation once they pop up so um so yeah that was sort of that was sort of the only real sort of big scientific unknown at the time that could have really brought down darwin is if if we had discovered that um, inheritance behaved more like blending than like particulate inheritance. Um, so let me just sort of go from there to tell you a little bit about what it is and what, why the debate matters today. Um, the idea of blending inheritance is exactly what I said. It is the idea that your genetic inheritance is passed on the same way that pouring cans of, of or pouring paint into a bucket is, right? Um, if you, if you start with yellow and blue, you'll get green and then you add some more yellow, the next, it, it, generation will get greener it'll get paler and paler and paler um the idea here being that blue is the mutation right so in the first generation blue is the mutation blue mates with yellow and then in the next generation there isn't a blue there's a green because they've mixed right uh then green mixes with yellow and you get a yellowish green and then that yellowish green mixes with yellow and you get a yellowish yellowish green and so forth and so on. Um, this idea was largely, um, I don't want to make, I don't want to say, make a sort of clear association here with um, supporters of slavery and white supremacy, but this idea is a big part, was a big part, is a big part in their ideas about the biology of race. Okay, this idea that race can be diluted, that um, that uh, um, once there is a little bit of a so-called inferior race in your family line, it is there, and you can, you know you can't you know even if it sort of thins out over time, it's it's a problem. Um, uh, it's less associated with that now, although that is that does underpin a lot of current, like, really um, militant white supremacy. Um, it's, uh, it's not as associated with race in general now. Um, 
So there's a lot of politics behind this idea, too. Um, now, if you think about it, this idea still persists a little bit in everyday thought, kind of for the same reasons that it did 170 years ago. Um, and that's because most people turn to skin color as an example. It's one of the most visible sort of examples that people have. And the idea was, you know, so uh, being mixed race at the time was not unheard of. People didn't talk about why it was happening. Uh, some of it was consensual, some, of, but absolutely most of it was the result of either slavery or colonization in some way. Um, but as, um, uh, but mixed race people were known about, right? They had names for them as well that I'm not going to use, uh, right now. But, um, even today we sort of hold on to this logic that, well, if a light skinned person or a dark skinned person have a baby, that baby's going to be kind of in between, right? Like, they, right? That's the way it works. You know, the, the baby will be lighter skinned than the, than the dark skinned uh, parent, but darker than the light skinned parent. And that's kind of a common sense a lot of us carry with us. Um, unfortunately, it actually isn't true. Uh, there's a video on the website I want you to watch, which is great. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a piece from Inside Edition, so it's not that educational. But um, it's a quick interview with uh, two twin girls in England who um, have a, a, a mixed-race mother and a white father. And one of the twins is has very bluish white, pale skin, uh, blue eyes, red hair, right, bright red hair. Um, and the other has very sort of uh, sort of a light tan skin, brown eyes, very curly, curly hair. Um, and they are twins. They were born to the same parents, actually, at the same time. Uh, and a lot of people don't believe that that's possible. Like, how could that possibly be? Well, it can be because inheritance doesn't blend. It's not like just mixing cans of paint. Instead, there is... Whoa, camera went out of focus. Uh, there is a, a particle of an inheritance that gets passed on from and contributed from each parent. So, just like you see here, you've got Blue parent, yellow parent. Well, their children. Uh, now, one maybe blue is a, maybe yellow is a, a recessive gene or blue. It doesn't matter in this instance. But um, if blue is a recessive gene, then the next uh, generation will have a mixed genotype, but phenotypically they will be yellow, just like uh, the yellow parent. Right. If those two are uh, um, are crossbred, then you get an another generation. But in this generation, you get exactly what we found when we were talking about Mendelian inheritance in Punnett squares. We get this ratio of one to two to one in terms of the um, of the uh, um, uh, the genotypes. Uh, so one yellow, two mixed, one blue. And then in terms of phenotypes, we get um, uh, three yellow and one blue. We get that three to one relationship. This is how we know it's particulate inheritance, because traits that disappear in one generation, like the blue, can reappear in another one. That can't happen with blended inheritance. Now, what's happening with those girls is exactly that. Now, it's extremely rare for this to, to happen uh, the way it has to that family. And that's because there are uh, something like 370 or so um, uh, genes that are associated with skin tone in some way. It's, uh, that's a lot. But keep in mind, the mother is herself mixed race, 
and we don't know what the black side of her family's family history looks like either. A lot of um, African Americans, Afro British, a lot of people of African descent outside of Africa and inside Africa um, have relatively recent white relatives in their past, whether they're acknowledged or not, whether it's talked about or not, uh, and whatever the circumstances, be they happy or tragic. Um, but the, uh, uh, the fact of the matter is, there is a mix of the different versions of alleles for all of these genes. Now, not all of them have a light allele and a dark allele. So that's not what I'm saying when I say 378 genes. But of them, there are a number that if you have a particular allele, you will have lighter skin, and another where you will have darker skin. Um, and so, um, in some cases, it could be codominance, if they're both dominant, but in many cases, it's because the lighter skin variant is recessive. Um, and so it's just, it's a, it's a roll of the dice that this happened. The combination of genes in the gametes that, uh, the combination of alleles in the gametes that fertilize the eggs for each of these girls was just perfect, you know, rare, but absolutely possible. So skin tone does not, even though visibly in common sense, it seems to us like it mixes together the, like cans of paint. It does not. It still follows the particulate inheritance pattern. Um, and it is further confirmation that Mendel is right. And it lends further support to natural selection. Because as I said, if blending inheritance is correct, then any beneficial new traits will be lost within a few generations. Okay. Um, that about does it for this time. Thank you very much, and um, have a great evening, day, whatever time it is where you are, uh, and take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.